Now available in paperback and e-readers, John Haynes, 1987. Learn lessons about life and teenage love in the 1980s in this coming-of-age John Haynes story. Get your copy of John Haynes, 1987 in paperback and e-readers at Amazon.com and online booksellers everywhere. Better get the cold slow, y'all, because we're having us a barbecue. <laughs> New York Governor Kathy Hochul had the audacity to say that black children from the Bronx don't know what the word computer means. Young black kids growing up in the Bronx who don't even know what the word computer is. They, they don't know. They don't know these things. And I want the world open up to all of them because when you have their di diverse voices innovating solutions through technology, then you're really addressing society's broader challenges. Now at the Milken Institute Global Conference in Beverly Hills, New York Governor Kathy Hochul felt safe enough to express the inner racist she had been hiding from black voters for the last four years. Now, New York Governor Kathy Hochul decided at this conference as she was sitting next to Jonathan Capehart to tell everyone that black kids from the Bronx don't know what the word computer means. Now, as a resident of the South Bronx, I take deep offense to that statement because as a resident of the South Bronx, I knew what the word computer meant when I was about four years old. Because when I was four years old, that's when my brother took me to see Star Wars. And in Star Wars, that's the first time I ever saw computers. And as I grew up as a fan of comic books, science fiction and fantasy, and read comic books like Iron Man, I saw what computers did to power Tony Stark's Iron Man armor. And as I was growing up in the South Bronx and attending public school at CES 132 as my elementary school, I was exposed to computers way back as far as about maybe 1983 or 1984. Because that's when we as a class, when I was in the fifth and sixth grade, were taken to the computer lab where Mr. Bufano was teaching computers. And it was there that I learned all about computers from the early computers they had in the lab, such as the Commodore PET computers, which were an early computer. And we all, later on in 1984, we got Commodore 64 computers at that school. Now, in addition to that, we, I also had a computer in an Atari 5200 that my brother brought me for Christmas back in 1982 or 83, I believe. So I have had access to computers and know what the word computer meant ever since I was little. And in addition to that Atari 5200 that my brother brought me, he also went and bought me a Neck Trek computer similar to the Commodore 64 in that it had basic language and I remember working on that computer learning all of the different commands sitting up in front of the 13 inch TV that we that I was plugged into and learning all about different basic commands in the basic language right there in my apartment that was across the street from the Metro North Railroad tracks on 3430 Park Avenue. So I have had access to computers ever since I was a little boy and I knew what the word computer meant ever, even as far back as I was four years old. And that's why I take deep offense to the statement that Kathy Hochul made as New York's governor, as a black voter, because this basically shows me that Kathy Hochul has no respect for black voters and has no respect for black people at all. Because the only reason why she made this extremely paternalistic and condescending statement towards black people is because she believes that she can take the black vote for granted and take black voters for granted as related to getting their votes in the 2026 election. And that's the main reason why she went out here and looked to condescend at this conference, believing that as she was sitting there talking about AI, thinking that, oh, I'm so intelligent and so superior that these black people, they are just the stupidest people to ever walk the face of the earth. That's the reason why she said black kids don't know what the word computer means, even though 
Today's black children have access to the same technology that I had access to, cutting edge technology. Many of the kids today have had access to that technology since the late, since the mid 1980s and into the 1990s we went from having those computers that had basic language to having computers like the Commodore Amiga and the I believe Atari 700 or 800 computers to going to have the IBM PS1 computers which was what I experienced and the Tandy 1000s I mean I experienced these computers in Park West High School and Taft High School and as I went on to Monroe College in here in the Bronx, I went on to experience other the IBM PS1 computers, and I became quite familiar with technology as I graduated college and went, got my first PlayStation after working at Food Emporium. And after that, I wanted to go out here and buy a tower computer. Now, both of my family members were able to buy tower computers with Windows. One brother, one of them had the Windows 98. The other one had Windows ME. But when I got my first computer, it, had, it was a Dell Inspiron 2500 laptop that I wrote many of my early books on. And after that, after I had a, a thing where I was out of work and I was and I, I had no computer for a year after my computer died in 2007, I went out here and bought a Dell Latitude D830 and a back backup MacBook Pro. I mean, technology has been in the South Bronx as as been out as black kids have been gaining access to computers and the internet from the days of 56k up to the broadband days and kids have been using that those computers to work with their ipad pods back in the day which replaced the walkman and they've also been using those computers to use their ipod touch which have connection to wi-fi and they've also been using them to now use them with their iphones and their smartphones smartphones that were distributed by president obama President Obama basically handed every person in the inner city access to smartphones if you had Medicaid or were on food stamps. So to say black children don't know what the word computer means basically was complete BS. And again, basically Kathy Hochul do, saying this statement because this is how she basically feels about black children. She feels uh, this way about black children behind the scenes and because she was in Beverly Hills among the rich elite what she did was feel so comfortable that she just felt like letting the world know how racist she really was and this is what happens with many of these white leftists many of these white leftists they will go out here and talk all about diversity and inclusion but in actuality a lot of these people behind the scenes in, in the closet are racist and sometimes the biggest racist in the room and that's what we saw with new york governor kathy hochel she basically showed everybody at this conference for the global um conference uh it was that that that, 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 that i was related to ai that she wasn't very smart no she wasn't smart she was talking about artificial intelligence initiatives here in new york city and new york state but really showed us all how dumb she was because she basically thought, oh, I'm, I'm comfortable here. All of these people have the same views that I do and they're not gonna go out here and call me out. No, they're not gonna call her out. And basically that's what happened at this conference where what's really sad is Jonathan Capehart was sitting right across from her and he didn't have the backbone or the balls to go and check this woman. I mean, that's the saddest part is that these black bootlicks have no courage whatsoever. Here is a white female disrespecting you straight to your face. And instead of standing up for black people, what Jonathan, who likes to put on his cape, cape heart for, he wants to, he goes out here and wants to be a hero and defend white folks, but won't go out here and stand up for foundational black Americans as related to a racist talking point that is openly disrespecting black people directly. And even worse, that cowardly cream of wheat man, New York Mayor Eric Adams, went out here and looked to justify Kathy Hochul's statements like a dutiful slave. I mean, wanted to stand up like a dutiful slave and just basically give Kathy Hochul a pass for saying black kids didn't know what the word computer means when he clearly knew as, again, a guy who was working as a transit cop that black people knew what computers were. I mean, in his day, 
people were buying, again, those Commodore 64 computers, Commodore Amiga computers, IBM PS1s. I mean, they were all throughout Brooklyn, but instead of him standing up for those black New Yorkers, who he basically has thrown a middle finger up to ever since he got elected by imposing that vaccine mandate that kept a million black New Yorkers out of work, he continued to show how little regard he has for foundational black American voters here in New York by going and continuing to stand at the side of a racist white woman, a racist white woman who openly felt comfortable about expressing that racism openly and directly to everyone because she felt she didn't have to respect the black voter because she thought she had the black vote in the bag. And that's where the problem lies with many of these foundational black American New York voters, especially us in the Bronx. Many of us will not go out here and believe that Kathy Hochul needs to suffer any consequences. No, a lot of these people still drinking the poison Kool-Aid, sitting there going, oh, she's the first female governor of New York, but the first female governor of New York is treating you the same way Bull Connor treated black people in the South, and many of those blue politicians treated black people in the South by showing you no respect at all. And that's where I got a bone to pick with many of the black voters here in the Bronx and in New York. I mean, here you have a person openly disrespecting you, already has an approval rating that is under 50%, due to her basically taking black people and putting us in the back and putting migrants ahead of us, open disrespect directed at you. But instead of black people seeing this as another reason not to vote for Kathy Hochul in 2026, what we got from many of these codependent black folks like an Eric Adams or a Jonathan Capehart is that they sit there and think, oh, I gotta take this disrespect. No, when somebody like Kathy Hochul goes out here and shows you the racist they are, this is where you take your respect by taking away your votes and taking away your support. Because if she believes that you don't know what a computer is, what she's basically telling all the black voters here in New York is that she believes you are a savage, you are primitive, you are living in the gutter and basically living like an animal. And that wasn't the case for many black children like myself who attended CES 132 from 1979 to 1985. For most of us kids who attended CES 132 from 1979, and I correct 1978 to 1985 because I first started school in 1978, we all knew what the word computer meant and when you have a white person who wants to try to tell you how you're living, that's when you stand up for yourself because nobody should be speaking for us. No, nobody should be speaking and telling us who we are. And that's something many of these leftists love to do. They love to go out here and tell us how we are living, similar to what the producers of that Good Times animated series wanted to do, People like Seth MacFarlane, people like the late Norman Lear, they like to sit there in their, in their houses in Beverly Hills and try to tell us what the ghetto is like. They want to tell us what life in places like the South Bronx is like, but don't want to go out here and consult a black man like myself who has been on the South Bronx streets, grew up in the South Bronx streets, no, what they want to do is create their reality and project it onto us. They don't want to see our reality of poor but proud black people who, yes, we may have to struggle and scrape in order to get things that we need, but we go out here and get them and maintain our dignity. No, don't want to talk to us about life here in the Bronx. No, what they want to do is sit there and say, oh, black kids don't know what the word computer means when kids have had access to these Obama phones made by the so-called first black president back in 2008. He basically, as part of Obamacare, allowed people to get access to these smartphones, and that basically made YouTube a cesspool and social media a cesspool. But that's another video right there because the whole thing is we've had access to this technology for over 40 years, 
and for 40 years we knew what the word computer meant and this is an insult to say to black people that we are not intelligent that's what Kathy Hochul was saying in that statement saying that black people are not intelligent at all that we're all just a bunch of 40 guzzlin lustful savages out here looking to fight each other in the street but that's not who black people are no that's never been who black people are because as a kid again who grew up in the worst part of the South Bronx at 3430 Park Avenue across the street from the Metro North tracks and had to endure horrors like the crack epidemic I know that it's possible to go out here and maintain your dignity and use the resources you have to build yourself up because that's what I have been doing again for the last 40 years trying to build myself up and show that you can get out of the ghetto but sadly you've got many of these leftists who want to keep us in the ghetto and want to keep us in a ghetto because that's the thing they imagine us and the place they imagine us being in their heads because the whole reality of dealing with a black person especially a heterosexual black man who can go out here and lead himself and speak for himself that's what makes people like Kathy Hochul uncomfortable and that's why she surrounds herself with Captain Savums like Jonathan Capehart and White Knights and like the cream of wheat man Eric Adams they'll tell her what she wants to hear instead of telling her the truth because if they have to deal with the Sean James he's gonna tell you the truth about black people like I did when I was on that Fox Soul show and I basically called out and denounced that move that book the color purple I'm not one of these guys who's gonna be sitting there bootlicking and telling you what you want to hear about black people no I want I'm gonna show you the reality of black people that we're ready to go out here and compete we know what the technology is and I knew I have an A plus certification in PC repair so I know what the technology is I know how to fix these computers know how to b build computers because I the laptop I make my videos on was a MacBook Pro I basically rebuilt by upping the RAM and upping the hard drive and formatting the hard drive I mean black kids we know what technology is and we know it very well I mean I've again worked on multiple computers and fixed them so I know what the technology is but you'll have people like Kathy Hochul want to believe that we're all just basically all thumbs and dumber than a box of rocks that we wouldn't know what the word computer means but I've just talked about multiple computers over multiple generations so I know what the word computer means and I know that there are kids out here who know what computers are because even VCRs are basically computerized because you I was at my house my v VCR had the clock and the time right because I programmed that VCR I read the manual and learned how to program that VCR as far back as 11 years old or 12 years old I mean I know what technology is I've been working with technology for an extended period of time and again I grew up poor in the South Bronx but I know how to use technology but Kathy Hochul wants to sit there and think oh we've got this AI that will think for black people no AI ain't thinking for me and Kathy Hochul doesn't speak for me because as a foundational black American man I speak for myself and I learned how to speak for myself in an articulate and intelligent way because I don't want some white leftist trying to go out here and present their paternalistic view of black people on me no I won't let somebody like a Kathy Hochul go out here and talk for me because when they talk for me all they're gonna do is use the same anti-black talking points just like Kathy Hochul did at that conference and feel comfortable enough to go and make those points because sadly these black bootlicks are too cowardly to stand up for black people too weak to stand up for black people and it's a real shame that this mayor who says that he is black sat there and gave her a pass no this is where you hold these white people who are on the left accountable the same way you would the ones on the white right because if somebody on the white right like Christy Noem the governor of South Dakota I believe would have, would have gone out here and said black kids don't know what the word computer meant all those blue party types would be all over her and they would be all attacking her 
but you see nothing but silence from many of these black leaders, from your Eric Adams to your Jonathan Capehart to your Al Sharpton, none of them going out here letting people know that this was out of line. Now, Kathy Hochul may have apologized, but that was only an empty gesture. And again, when somebody goes out here and disrespects you the way Kathy Hochul has done, this is where you have to take your respect because it's clear that she takes the black vote for granted. And if she cannot give us the intangible of respect, then we don't take our booties to the poll to go vote for Kathy Hochul because she's shown that she's not really about empowering black people and not about empowering black people because the way you talk about us with your with your homies in Beverly Hills that's the way you actually feel about black people and black people really need to start taking the whole process of life more seriously because the whole thing is people like Kathy Hochul on the left they all want to talk about how, again, they're all about diversity and inclusion, but it's clear they want to openly exclude you because to sit there and she wouldn't say this about Hispanics, she wouldn't say that about Muslims, she wouldn't say that about Arabs, or she wouldn't say that about Jews, but she'll say that about black people because she has no respect for black people because many black people like Eric Adams and Jonathan Capehart have no dignity and no self-respect. And because they have no dignity and no self-respect, they sit there and cower and give her a pass instead of shoving a foot square dead up her ass. And that's what the way you do that. Again, you have to check a person like this by letting them know, hey, you're not going to talk about us like that. And that's what black people need to do in the case of people like this. We need to, again, measure out some sort of consequences because when somebody openly goes out here and feels they have the right to talk about black people like this, this is where black people have to let those on the left, just like those on the right, know we're not going to take disrespect. No, this is where you take your respect and check someone like a Kathy Hochul for out-of-pocket statements like this. Now, if you want to pick up some of my positive black fiction on the SJS Direct imprint, you can find those books that I was inspired to start writing when I was nine years old on Amazon.com. And you can pick up the books of the Isis series, the Esteem series, the John Haynes series, the books of the Spinsterella trilogy, my black vampire novel, The Eternal Night, my black sorority novel, The Thetas, and my black business novel, Recipe for Success, you can find all those books on Amazon.com in paperback and Kindle format. You can also find them at other online booksellers like draft to digital Google Play, Barnes & Noble, and you can also find them at big box retailers like Walmart and Target. And if you'd like to see me make more videos like this, taking politicians like Kathy Hochul to the barbecue, you can send a donation to the Patreon, the PayPal, or the Cash App by clicking the links in the description box. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Now available in paperback and e-readers, John Haynes, Illuminati, a man who rules the world, takes on the head of the global elite in this all-new action-packed John Haynes series adventure. Get your copy of John Haynes, Illuminati in paperback and e-readers at Amazon.com and online booksellers everywhere. Support Black-owned and Black-operated digital broadcast media, www.niceradionetwork.com. Nice Radio Network, broadcasting 24 hours a day, 7 days a week.